I'm John Buchanan. In this video, we're going to be looking at MIDI data management. Now, that might not sound terribly exciting, but actually, this is a video all about what we can do with MIDI data, applying it to different tracks within our project, just to really maximize the way that we can drive our sample libraries and kind of wring out the musicality that they inherently possess. But what we can also do with MIDI data is to learn how to strip it out of sounds where we don't need it. So we're going to be looking at how we can manage all of that information and apply it to the sounds that we want it to apply it to. Okay, so before we go any further, let's just have a listen to this track. There is no MIDI controller data being used in this project at the moment. I'm running five separate sample instruments, but none of them have been finessed in the ways that we're going to be uh, looking at in just a little while. Okay, so all of these sample instruments are currently using uh, Spitfire Audio Symphonic Strings libraries. And like lots of Spitfire libraries, what these samples allow you to do is to add musicality by drawing lines of controller data or recording those with a controller such as this. So what that means is that I can control things like volume or indeed the dynamic layers that have been recorded. When you make sample libraries in the way that Spitfire have, you record those players playing very quiet notes and very loud notes and notes with intensity in between, and what you want to be able to do is to move between those recordings, calling up their different dynamic layers to add new layers of musicality to your project. And what I want to do now is to start recording some of that information to help shape the phrases of this piece a little bit more. Now, there are a number of ways that you can do that, and the way that I'm going to do it is that I want to capture this MIDI data as a separate track of information, but I want to hear it as it records. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to mute all of the instruments that aren't the first violin part, which is sitting up here at the top. And what I'm then going to do is to come up to the track menu, and I'm coming to Other, and what I'm going to do is to select a new track with the same instrument. Now what this does is to create another violin one track with exactly the same settings. That's not a duplicate instrument. Basically, these two things are the same. So what I have a chance to do here is to record the MIDI data as a separate set of events, but of course, effectively, it's sitting on top of the notes that exist on this track. And we'll see why that's going to be beneficial in just a moment. So the first thing I'm going to do is to shape this performance a little bit. What I have a chance to do here is to control, firstly, the dynamic layers using this first controller, and here is the overall volume. And what I'm going to do in real time is just record a sort of shape to this phrase uh, just to make sure that um, it's just a little bit more musical than it feels right now. Turn off the click track. Okay, so what I've now got is a separate data stream. I've got the notes here, and I've got the MIDI information here. And if I double click on it, what I have a chance to do is just dive into this window. And what I should be able to see is I've got modulation down here at the bottom, and I've got expression under it as well. So what we've got is these two separate data streams. And if I wanted to, I can manipulate those, but actually I'm happy with the way that that recording has happened. So that's fine. What I then want to be in a, in a position to do is to use this data and apply it to the other sounds within my track. Now, of course, I could go through and record a discrete line of modulation and expression data for each separate instrument, and probably that would be the most musical thing to do. I want to be in a position where maybe the cellos are building and swelling in different places to the first violins. But what I'm actually going to do is to use this data stream as a sort of template to apply to the other sounds. 
So here's how I'm going to do it. I'm actually going to create a completely empty track down here at the bottom. I'm just double clicking to create an empty track. And what I'm then going to do is to copy just that data down to the bottom. So I've got two versions of it. Remember, there are no notes in this file. This is just the modulation and expression data. And what I can then do is I can select this first track and I'm going to glue it to the first violin part by pressing T for the toolbar, grabbing the glue tool and gluing that MIDI data onto that first track. So I've effectively merged those two things. Now the MIDI data is part of that first violin part. So why did I copy it first? Why was that important? Well, if I want to use this MIDI data and I want to glue it to the second violin part as well, it's important that that data exists as a track in its own right. If I try to copy the first violin part down to the second violin part, not only will I get the data, I'll get all of the first violin's notes as well. And I don't want that. I just want the MIDI data. So it's important that I always have one extra track of just the MIDI data before I copy it. So what I can then do is to duplicate this back up to here, and this time I can glue it to the second violin part. And now they're going to be part of that same track. If they happen to glue upwards to the track above, no problem, I can just move it back down. I can of course use, if I want to, just the track next door here as well. I'm just effectively always looking to make sure that I've created another data line. This time I'm going to add this to the violas. And I'm going to do the, it one more time here with uh, the cellos. So again, I've always got one extra track. So by isolating the MIDI in this way, the huge, uh, the MIDI data in this way, what I've obviously got is the opportunity to treat these as two separate things. And it doesn't matter, of course, if I end up with one spare track of just the MIDI notes or the MIDI data stream down here at the bottom, that's fine. It's just sitting there waiting for me to either just throw it away now that I've got that um, glued to those other instruments or maybe to um, uh, be applied to another set of sounds a little bit further down the line. So what we've now done is we've glued this data to all of the instruments within the track. Let's see now how they benefit from that slightly more musical shape with uh, the uh, modulation and expression data that we recorded for that first violin part. Okay, well that sounds much more full and rich and symphonic, and that's working really nicely. Okay, so what about the opposite? What if what we wanted to do was to actually strip out all of that MIDI data? Well, why would we ever want to do that? Well, let's suppose for a moment that what I wanted to do was to take these sounds or these musical parts and apply them to samples from maybe different string um, uh, sample libraries which don't use modulation and expression in the same way. Different sort of sample developers use different approaches to bring musicality to the sounds that they want to use. And it could be that actually maybe modulation and expression control different things in those libraries. So maybe what I want to do here is to say, okay, I want to use the notes, but I don't want all of the expression and modulation data. I want to be in a position where I can remove it. Okay, well, let's see how we could do that. Let's suppose, for example, what I want to do is to take all of the sounds that are being used here, and I want to double them all with another sample library, maybe something that's kind of playing a sort of string pad just to add even more symphonic richness to this part. Okay, so firstly, what I need to do is to fold all of these separate parts down to become one data line. Okay, so what I'm going to do is to select all of them. I'm going to drag them over here just to the right hand side of the project for a moment. And then what I'm going to do is to glue them all together. Okay, so now what I've got is all of the notes playing on one track. That's fine. But what I've also done, of course, is to incorporate five separate layers of modulation and expression data from all of those separate parts. And I don't want any of that information. So how do I strip it out? How do I get rid of it? Well, I'm going to double click on this so that I'm actually looking at this MIDI data. I can see the line, I can see that all of this expression data here. And remember, there's five channels of that sitting there because I folded all of those parts together. Up here in the top right hand corner, what I can do is to click on the list editors. 
And what the list editors are going to do is to show me the range of lists that are available to me to sort of view within my project. And the first list editor is simply showing me all of the regions that exist. It's seeing the names of them and it's showing me where they exist. And this part here at the moment is labeled violin one and it's happening at bar 12. So I can see that that's where um, this information lies. But if I click outside of here and I click back on this region, what I get a chance to do is to see the data that's contained within this region, including all of the expression and all of the modulation data. And as you can see, this is a massive long list because it's five sets of all of that controller data. What I want to be able to do is to throw that away whilst keeping the actual MIDI notes themselves. Well, how can I do that? Well, very straightforwardly, as it turns out, if I click on one piece of modulation data, just one, and then I press Shift and S, what will happen is that I will select all similar events. Well, all modulation data is similar to other bits of modulation data. So by clicking on one modulation event, and then by pressing Shift and S, all of the modulation data is now highlighted, and I can press Backspace to throw it away. I can then do the same thing with the expression data. I'm going to click on one event, Shift, S, that's all of the expression data, and I can throw that away too. And now I only have the notes left. So all of that controller data has gone. OK, so I'm now in good shape. I can close this down. I can take this region and I can put it on this patch, which is a full string ensemble. If I want to, I can rename it, which is Shift Option N. And now I can see that this is just the string ensemble part. And also, at the moment, I've also got two viol first violin tracks because I set that second one up. I can throw that away too because I don't need that anymore. So now what we've got is all of this string sound exactly in the way that we did before. And underneath it is going to be a sort of string pad accompanying it, which has been stripped out from all of that MIDI data. So in this video, what we've done is we've learned how to separate the notes and the controller information for separate streams of MIDI data. What we did to start with was to set up a parallel duplicate track. In other words, a track that with exactly the same settings as our first violin part, and we recorded modulation and expression data as a separate thing. What we then did was to copy that so that each time we decided to glue that information to a different instrument, we had a separate line of data ready to be used again to assign to the next instrument. What we then did was to copy all of those separate uh, instrument tracks and then strip MIDI data out of them using this really useful key command, which is Shift and S to select similar events before using Backspace to throw them away, leaving us with just the notes but none of that MIDI data so that we can assign that to a separate instrument. So if you're ever looking to manage your MIDI data in order to bring a more musical performance to your sample libraries, this is a really nice way of going about that process.